Hello, everyone, and welcome to the podcast. Have you ever wondered what you can do if suddenly you were to lose your job? That's what we'll talk about today. A wise man will make more opportunities than he finds. Francis Bacon. Right now, it's a tough time for everybody. I think that there are places that are looking for a lot of people to work, which is great. But there are a lot of places, too, that are struggling, never recovered from the pandemic, or are finding hard times in this inflationary period to keep their jobs. And so today we're going to talk about what you can do in order to find a new job. We're going to talk about the book, Overcoming Redundancy, 52 Inspiring Ideas to Help You Bounce Back from Losing Your Job by Gordon Adams. I think this is a good time to talk about this book because there were a lot of places that did okay during the pandemic. You know, maybe it was a tech company and people were working from home and the tech company did rather well. Think about all those delivery services that people made use of during the pandemic. But then when people start going back to the regular activities, they might not need those delivery services the same way or restaurants that tried to hang on and just couldn't make it happen. And so I thought this book was particularly good at telling you not necessarily step-by-step about how to find a job, although there's a ton of really great advice about how to do that in this book, but it's a lot of mindset when it comes to what you do in order to find a good job. And so he said the first step is when you lost your job is to not freak out or get down. I lost a job that I did not like, (laughs) but it was stressful to me. It was something that I really needed to find to do something else. And it was in my nature to just feel like I'm just going to sit and play video games. I'm just going to sit here and ignore the fact I need a new job and just take a little bit of a break. But then a lot of people came to my side and told me that when you're looking for a new job, that's your job when you don't have one but don't freak out. A lot of times getting a new job is about how many places you apply, look, talk to someone. And so you have to think about all the places. And he mentions this in the book too, that you've come since your last job, all the experiences that you got. You're not the same person as you were eight years ago when you started this job, or even three years ago when you started this job, you learned a whole host of new skills that you're really going to bring to that next job. And so taking into account what better person you are today, what new things that you've learned so that you will be a better employee for a better company in the future, is going to help you. This is actually a huge opportunity for you to do something else and do something that you like better. It is scary to lose a job, particularly, you know, when you didn't want to lose the job, but it's not the end of the world. And you will find another job. It's a time, too, where you don't want to burn any bridges. There are people I know who have done that in the past where they left a company. And when that company turned around and they were looking to hire back some of the people they let go, the first people off that list were the people who left in an ugly way. You can be mad about a company. You can get disappointed in a company. But You have to realize that all these people are people too. And if you burn bridges, which is analogous to just being mean to them or saying awful things to them, that's going to ruin your chances if things turn around in that company for you to get hired back if you want to get hired back or even for them to give you a good reference. There were so many people that I had good relationships with in the company. They almost became helpers to me to help me find a new job. Oh, I heard this person was looking for a job and this company is great. In fact, when I took that next job, it came because this person referred me to that company, told me what a great company it was to work for, and gave me some people that I could talk to about the job. So not burning bridges, even though it might feel really good at the moment, is a great way to start in looking for a new job. Because when people think of you fondly, they'll become helpers to you. And then start even thinking about your own options. What do you want to do? You know, even think outside the box. When that happened to me in the past, and it was not my own doing, my first thoughts were terrible about, oh no, why did this happen to me? What, What should I do now? This was unfair. And it was unfair. But then the mistake I made 
initially is that I didn't start dreaming. I spent so much time thinking about the past. I stopped thinking about, well, this is a chance for me to do something else. You didn't really like that company. You didn't really like working for that company. What could you do otherwise? And that's what I did better than the next time when I was looking for a job because I started thinking about me and what I wanted to do for my own career. What would make me happier? And I started writing down some of the pros and cons about my last job, what I would like in a future job, and try to design it a little bit better. So I even had this checklist of what I wanted in a job. So every time I went to an interview, I could say whether or not that company met my standards. It's easy to get caught up in looking at interviews as this company is now testing me to see if I would fit well in their company. But instead, I was looking at it, will this company fit well with me? And that's where I turned the tables on it and had a better experience looking for a job. I was interviewing them. And so taking that step back and thinking about what you want is really important. The company I worked with was a pretty terrible company. It didn't take into account employees or employee happiness at all. And it felt like there was a gigantic floating axe waving over everybody's head all the time. And I decided I never wanted to be in that situation again. So that was an important, that there was work stability. Beyond just thinking of this as a new opportunity, maybe this is a time to change industries. You didn't even like the industry you were in. I decided at that point I was never going to work in this type of company again. And I never have. And I think it was a good decision. But maybe it's a chance for you to work part-time or a different type of schedule, or maybe you wanted to do something that was a little bit more inside your interest instead of just taking a job to pay the bills. Think about it. What is it that you want to get out of work beyond just insurance and pay? How can you find a job that fits your life? And it's really easy, he says, for us to get stuck, depressed, feeling like we're in a rut when we've lost our jobs. But if we can think about what we want, dream a bit about it, we're going to have a better time of finding something that really fits us. Then he talks about networking. This is where you're going to talk to people that you know. That's what I did successfully that one time is I talked to everyone I knew. And that's where I started getting leads to really good companies. Because you can look at websites and you can get reviews of companies that are there. But you have to realize that when you go to a website like Glassdoor or places that review companies, a lot of the people who write reviews there are mad about something. Something happened to them or the company wasn't what they thought it was. And I've read even reviews of my own company and other companies like it that I know are places where I have friends that are happy. And the reviews are terrible for the most part because they encountered something that they didn't like. It's easier to find referrals from people that you know who are a little bit like you who can recommend a new place to look, a better type of company. But this is your chance to take that networking all the people that you know, and ask for help. You don't want to get bitter or afraid or even talk badly about any of these companies. Instead, you want to give it a chance to reevaluate your life and to have friends and work friends and acquaintances help you connect to new places to go. Think about who can help me the best right now. What is it then at my job that I'd like to do? And what am I capable of doing? This is where I found good advice on writing down all the skills you have, even if they're stupid. (laughs) You know, we used to get resumes in that people said, well, I'm good at Snagit. Okay, Snagit's fine and everything. It's a good product and I use it, but it's not necessarily what you want to put on your resume. But you want to write that down on your own personal list of things that you're good at because you're trying to look at things that are enabling in your skill. You want to come up with good sentences about what you're able to do. And you want to think about ways that you can not only just make money, but make more money. You want this to be a step up. You know, people talk about that phrase of falling forward. 
when you get a new job, you don't necessarily want to fall back. You don't want a worse job. You don't want to work more hours and make less money. He wants us to think about how much money we need to earn, how much money we would like to earn, and where do we want to be in 10 years. He even asks us to ponder if it's time to gain a new skill or get some training or go back to school. This is an opportunity for you to change the course of your life. It sucks to lose a job. A lot of times it puts us in a panic situation. But if we can dream a little bit about what is next for us, it'll help us find the next great thing. He gives a quote. And keep in mind that when he talks about being made redundant, that means that a company just decided, I already have two people doing this particular task. I only need one. Being made redundant is his code for getting laid off. During this period, after which being made redundant, we often advise candidates to strive to achieve something else in their lives apart from getting a new job, whether it's learning a new language, running a marathon, or some other achievement. It really doesn't matter. It gives the individual a boost, a new success in their lives, and something else to talk about in the job interview. And that quote comes from Kate Farrington, principal career counselor, not only just taking training so that you can be a better this or that, but also just boostering your emotions at this time. You're feeling vulnerable at this time. So even if it's time for training, or it's time for taking on a new adventure, it is important in this book, and I think it's a good idea to do something new or do something you haven't done in a while, but start to bolster your emotions. Start to bolster your confidence in yourself. Get a chance to maybe even see family you haven't seen in a while. Do some things in this time of opportunity that you can do to improve your mood improve your spirits, recharge yourself, maybe go camping or something like that so that you feel better about it. So I thought it was good advice because a lot of times when we are looking for a new job, everything is focused on this one task. His advice so that you actually can do other things and look at other things, I think will help us in feeling better about ourselves. And just that quote from Kate Farrington gives you something else to talk about during your interview. I have interviewed so many people in the course of my company, and I always was told that I'm a pretty hard interviewer, that people are scared of me, which I try not to be scary because, you know, being a pretty friendly person, but I always ask really tough questions. And if someone hasn't had a job for a while, you say, well, what have you been doing? You know, you haven't had a job for six months. Have you, you know, what have you been doing? It's not necessarily a death knell of your interview to say, I haven't worked in six months. But if it's followed up with, well, I've mostly been sitting on the couch napping, or I try to look for a job, but I've also been, you know, playing video games a lot. Mm, It's probably not a really good answer. But when you hear about someone who said, I decided to volunteer because I had this time for an organization I've always dreamed of volunteering for. Not only would that volunteer time make you feel good. It helps the community. It's a great thing to say in an interview, but it also might give you leads to finding your own job. So these are really good chances when you're looking for a job to do something that will make you feel better, make your story more interesting. And when someone says, well, what have you been doing for the last six months while you're looking for a job? You have a pretty good answer for that. He says that's important that while you're getting ready to find a new job, that you get that resume written. I found even a step backwards is important that when I lost my job and I didn't have that other job, I was so stressed out. It was hard for me to write a resume. So what I decided after that point is that I would never not have a resume, that as soon as I was given a new task, a new challenge, I would put it in my resume. So then if something were to happen or I look for a new job or maybe this fabulous uh, executive recruiter came looking at me, I would have an up-to-date resume that I could hand to people. Maybe a little nudging here and there, but when you lost a job is the last time you want to be writing your resume. You want to have a resume available all the time. Same thing with that elevator speech. I talk about it a lot. I talked about it in the marketing podcast. 
I have episode 19, which talked about how to write an elevator speech, but you want to be able to have something which he says, quote, the nature of a good elevator speech is punchy, snappy, and upbeat. A distillation of who you are condensed and served up in a bottle. So you're an elevator and maybe you're just chit-chatting with someone and they say, oh, what do you do for a living? Oh, you know what? I recently left my company and I'm looking for new employment. Oh, that's really interesting. You know, I'm a CEO of a company. What kind of a job are you looking at? Or who are you that is looking for a job? If you have that elevator speech ready to give, that person in the elevator might hire you. If you ended up working at Starbucks just to make a little bit of money and you were talking with your next customer in line, that next customer in line might be the person who's going to hire you for your next permanent job. So having that elevator speech of who you are, of what kind of job you're looking for, or what you hope to even be doing in five years with your life, that right there can make all the difference when looking for a job. He says that we have to have career anchors, and these are the things that really drive us and motivate us. And it might be a certain type of a challenge, something that really gets you going when you're thinking about work. I like tech. I like working in tech. I work in a software company. I also work in a software company that helps scientists do better research and helps cure diseases in the future. I like that. It makes me feel good to go to my job knowing that I help people who are saving lives. I'm not saving lives but I'm helping them. And so it makes me feel like I'm doing something valuable with my life. That's an important career anchor for me. Sometimes people want jobs that are difficult. They want to figure out a tough problem. Maybe they're developers and they're trying to figure out how to write complicated software. But finding out what your career anchors are really makes you motivated is important. And even knowing what your values are If you're in a job where you don't feel like you're getting your true value done, and another company that I worked for that I left to join a tech company was a terrible place to be, and I realized that it was making me unhappy because the ownership of the company changed, the people were no longer interested in producing technical people in technical resources, having happy employees, The whole company changed when we were bought out. So everything that was what would be a career anchor for me suddenly became invalid because that company stopped being the kind of company I wanted to work for. So he said that a lot of counselors or advisors will try to help you see something that you don't see, that maybe your values, your career anchors aren't being met in the job that you either have or won't be met in a job that you're trying to get. So when you're looking at jobs and you're trying to imagine you being happy in this work, if you know that you're the kind of person who needs X or needs Y and this new job doesn't have it, chances are you're not going to be very happy on it. Maybe this next job is a stepping stone career, which is perfectly acceptable. I got outside the tech world, I really wanted to be in the tech world. And so I had a job that was a stepping stone for me going into the tech world. I started out in IT, supporting desktops and and machines. And eventually I worked my way up to becoming a system administrator. It was a stepping stone job for me and something that got me where I am today. So maybe the goal of your job or the career anchor of your job is to get you another new job in the future. This is your life. That's okay. You can plan your life in advance. Or maybe it's time for you to start your own business. That's pretty hard because you have to make sure that you have the money and all the things, but maybe that's that right time for you. But then you can decide whether or not that matches your goals, your career anchors, or something that you're looking at. We talked about in past podcasts about treating your life as an experiment. So think about it that if you were planning on becoming a restaurant owner in the future, maybe your stepping stone career is working in a restaurant or you want to be a bookshop owner. Maybe your stepping stone career is working in a bookstore so you can see how it works. But make sure that when you're looking for a new job that your needs are being met that you will become happy, productive, financially successful, 
all the things that you're really hoping to get in your next life. And so in the end, I think this book was really good. I think it gives a lot of thinking when it comes to how you can plan for being happy and fulfilled in your next job and not to panic if you were to lose your job and feel depressed or devastated about that, but instead taking this on as an opportunity to move forward. So my challenge to you is try to imagine if you were going to get another job. Maybe you're not looking right now. Maybe you're not in danger of losing your job. But pretend for a moment that you are going to look for a new job. What are those career anchors that are really going to make you fulfilled? What are you looking for in a new job? Would it be another schedule? Would it be another pay increase? Would it be another industry that you're not working in? And maybe even jot down some of these things that if you were going to get another job, what is it that you would be looking for? Maybe this is your chance then to actually just casually look in the ads, on the websites, in the different places to see if any of those jobs meet your needs. But doing a little dreaming will help you know what's next. All right, everyone, thanks so much for listening. I hope you had a chance to look at my Twitter feed. I'm doing a better job with social media. It's not my strength, but I'm trying to curate ideas that will make your life better. So follow me on Twitter. You can find that on my website at smallstepspod.com. It has links to all the social media I do, and it also has links to all the different places that you can listen to this podcast. I'm on all the major services, and you can always remember that you can look for a new job even if you're really stressed out, but taking small steps.